three minutes of simple quality canal boat related advice. If you find yourself running aground and getting stuck, firstly don't panic and secondly don't fall into the trap of adding some revs and trying to brute force your way past the obstruction. The lowest part of your boat is likely to be at the back, so what you want to do is go into reverse and try and slide yourself back off the obstruction and then move forwards around it. If you find yourself really stuck and wedged in, even with reverse on, this may sound ridiculous but I promise I've actually seen this work in real life, if you start to shift your weight from foot to foot to literally rock the boat, you might find that will help free your boat. This next tip may give you an insight into my obsessive nature, but if you are passing a service station and you're not in a rush, and if you are in a rush then perhaps a canal boat isn't the transport you need at that moment, but I would always take the opportunity to empty my toilet tanks. I am speaking as somebody who was using a much lower capacity cassette style toilet on board with a spare cassette tank as well. However, I always viewed it as a case of you never know what's going to happen. Even recently there's been an unexpected leak in the canal around Ellesmere and the last thing that you need is to end up caught short with limited capacity for waste on the wrong side of a stoppage or if you've had boat issues for example. Lift your fenders before entering a lock. This was something I first realised was a huge issue at the Hilston Locks many many moons ago when I found myself entering the lock and not even being able to get my tiny 30 foot boat all the way into it before it had become wedged between the narrow walls in there. These locks are very very narrow to begin with in many cases and over the years with all of that usage, all of the water seeping in the ground and goodness knows what else, you can imagine some of those walls of locks are no longer as straight as they once were. So safety around locks cannot be overstated in my opinion. Sometimes even lifting the fenders will not be enough and in rare cases your boat simply won't go through the lock. I had some friends who couldn't get through the Hilston bottom lock, were told to try it again on a drier day, but instead ended up having to cancel their plans and missed out on visiting the entirety of the Llangofflin Canal. Continuing the theme of lock safety and the narrow space you're operating within, it's important to think about the huge amount of potential for getting hands and feet trapped and pinched between the boat and the lock sides there are, especially if you're not just operating the boat but getting on and off the boat inside the lock too. What I'm about to say is the most simple, basic and obvious advice you'll ever hear, but I'll tell you in just a moment as to why I'm determined to always say this specifically. So when you're operating the lock gates you might find sometimes the gates are really stiff and you might be tempted to try and really push them with all your might, don't do that. You might also find yourself operating locks on slippy or wet ground or uneven ground, so you need to be very careful, take as much time as is needed and keep your wits about you. Because even in the area that I'm from, which is relatively flat in the grand scheme of things and has far fewer locks than a lot of areas of the canal, I know of some incredibly serious incidents that have happened and believe me, you do not want to be involved in them, you don't want it to happen to somebody that you know or someone that's on your boat and you also don't want to be the person who comes along to potentially a rural lock as the first person on the scene of the incident and, well, whatever they may end up discovering there. Well, that's closer to four minutes of advice, so enjoy that bonus content, my friends. Thank you very much for watching, and please consider checking out my Patreon. There's loads of free stuff there you can subscribe to and watch without paying any extra, so don't consider it all a paid-for thing. Please consider checking out my books about boat life, available for the Kindle and as a paperback, and feel free to add me on things like Facebook, where I post endless amounts of short-form video and photos from the canals and the great outdoors. Thank you very much for your time my friends. See ya!